you know, Klonoa PS1 game, PS2, the US Game Boy Advance games, you know, those, I have all those as well. Um, I actually have the Japanese versions of those Game Boy Advance games as well. But you look at how awesomely oversimplified the first one's box art was, just Klonoa, well, BMIK. Ja ja Japanese box art tends to trump Americans all the time. Yeah. Even when it's just understated. I mean, they actually yeah. did end up using this box art crop for the, the sequel in, in the U.S., but obviously the whole widescreen effect makes it look uh, so much cooler. There's a reason we, reason we have an addiction to imports. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I mean, other than that, I was just telling Ed, you know, the fun little Mike backstory was the only Klonoa thing that uh, didn't uh, make its way into my humble abode now these days was a stuffed Klonoa plushie that... I bought off eBay like a million years ago. Uh, uh, Namco was, you know, funding uh, prizes for like uh, Japanese skill crane games. So there was uh, like Pac-Man characters you can get and all this other stuff. And one of them was a stuffed Klonoa. But um, you can all uh, try to track down my ex. One of my exes. <laughs> she uh, took she's, it. She's got it. Yeah. <laughs> so it was a blurry situation. She was into it too when I bought it. So I don't know if it was a indirect gift for her but yeah if you want to look at it that way yeah you yeah. still got it you don't yeah, yeah so, <laughs> so it was a, you gotta pick your battles so you know more power to her but um so yeah so that was the warzord stuff um the klonoa stuff that i showed you guys um and then the only other thing i was going to briefly show which i'm not going to spend you know too much time on it just because uh certainly a passion that tons and tons of people uh have out there and uh, you guys might may have actually seen it on the last video that i was taking here and he did like a quick uh, buzz through around um, was some of my Neo Geo games that I have. Uh, funny story behind that, um, I actually bought a Neo Geo from uh, a friend of mine who was going to school up in Boston, and a friend of his, uh, he, he owned a Neo Geo, and I, would, I was always uh, in his face about, you know, oh, you gotta get uh, this game, Rage of the Dragons, it was uh, supposed to be a sequel to the Double Dragon game series, but the uh, developer or publisher they couldn't get the rights to use the actual uh, characters. So while the two main guys were still named Billy and Jimmy, they weren't Billy and Jimmy Lee. Um, but uh, it was, you know, my, my buddy had all these awesome Neo Geo games. He bought Mark of the Wolves when it first came out, you know, for $600, whatever ridiculous prices they were going for back then. Um, but he never had Rage of the Dragons, never, ever. Um, and I would always just get in his face about it. So um, I eventually tracked down Rage of the Dragons, you know, years later uh, from the Neo Geo message boards. And uh, I just bought it without having a system. And, you know, I called my buddy at Massar. I'm like, hey, you're not going to believe it. I got Rage of the Dragons. I'm coming up to Boston. We're going to play we're it tonight. play it tonight. <laughs> yeah, so, and it was like, well, Mike, I'll do even better. You come up tonight. Like, a guy that lives two dorms down from me actually has a boxed Neo Geo Gold system, two controllers, a memory card, you know, half a dozen games. Let me see if he'll want to sell it. And then you can just come up here. We'll play it. And you can just go on with the Neo Geo. And long story short, that's exactly what happened. And I the rest it. is history after that because I keep looking at those shelves over there and yeah. there's a lot. All I can say there's a bulk of cash just sitting on those shelves right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So undisclosed location. So, un, you know, no windows, no identifiers here. Just poster around the wall. Yeah, it's over that way, I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah right. Um, so I was going to show you guys just a, a couple. Um, I was going to show you Rage of the Dragons and a couple others. Like I said, this was, uh, so this was my favorite. This was the Crown Jewel uh, Rage of the Dragons. Unfortunately, it's the, uh, the Jap version. While they did release a domestic one, um, I never tracked down the U.S. version, and it was it's certainly really, really tough to find. And when it does pop up on eBay, it usually goes for between like six and uh, six and eight hundred dollars, and definitely a lot to invest uh, at my age nowadays, I guess. <laughs> so that was Rage of the Dragons. Well, you have like a mortgage to pay or something. Oh right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Uh, well, you know, I have Rage of the Dragons and a, a few other ones, and like, like Ed said, he was going to uh, to show you guys a couple of them. Um, one of the big, I guess, you know, sort of areas for discontent about Neo Geo uh, uh, collectors and all that stuff, uh, very mixed bag of uh, reactions, is the whole concept of conversion carts, where, because um, the U.S. home carts, or, or Japanese home carts, whatever, uh, they're really tough to find, we're always made in really low numbers, so um, sometimes it's easier to, f to buy the MVS cartridge, which was the ones that they would make for the arcade systems, and people would print out their own labels and yeah. stuff them in the, the lunch boxes, uh, the lunchbox cases, and, you know, just have them that way. So while well, there's some diehard fans that are going to, you know, be hating on Ed in his comments, <laughs> sorry, Ed, but uh, I definitely do uh, have a few uh, conversions 
Uh, and I tried to just get conversions of games that actually never were made in the U.S. or, or, or made for the home cart. So one of those was this uh, horizontal shooter called Prehistoric Isle 2. So um, it came out in arcades, and but was never released in the U.S. And what was fun was that it was actually like a rendered uh, shooter, like uh, Polestar, like Donkey Kong Country, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, but was never released in the U.S., so I pulled the trigger on this fun conversion. Uh, it comes in a you know a nice case, and then uh, you know a fun cartridge with like the warning sticker and all that fun stuff. And then a couple others that I got were, um, <laughs> if anybody ever, if, I mean I'm sure Ed must have it. Uh, the uh, SNK released an arcade uh, collection pack uh, last year or year year before yeah, for well, PS2 and Wii and, and the, PSP. Yeah, the, the, the PSP. I can't remember yeah. a couple years ago. Yeah. yeah. So there was a, a a bunch of different games on it. Um, one of which was the first uh, Shock Troopers game. Now, the first Shock Troopers game, stay with me, the first Shock Troopers game wasn't released uh, for home carts, but the sequel was released for home carts only in Japan. So, um, for my conversion, if I was getting conversions, like, oh, I'll try to get, you know, stick them all to the US version. So, I got a conversion of the first Shock Troopers with, you know, an old style case. And then, um, since the Shock Trooper sequel in Japan uh, is another rare game to find, um, I couldn't see spending all the you know all that money on the sequel when I can get a conversion and you know have uh, have it made like in a U.S. style to you know to match uh, the first one that I had. So unfortunately, this kind of goes against the the rule that I said. But I had a conversion made of Shock Troopers to Second Squad, and also with like a U.S. style case. So that was them. So again, conversions. Uh, you know, people are gonna be giving at the business. I'm sure. Yeah, but there's a lot more original originality over on those shelves to make up for it. So yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll you know, it'll show you. I mean, there's a couple. <coughs> speaking of money, there's a couple. You know, U.S. metal slug carts over there, and um, some of. I mean, I and I got the system. Jeez, I mean, I guess the years are blending together now, but. I got the system like turned like the last wave of uh, home cards that came out, and I was able to get those new as they came out. So like King of Fighters 2003, uh, the last couple Metal Slugs, you know, four and five, I got those as they came out, um, and then kind of you know picked up a few other just like greatest hits, you know, if you want to call them like SVC Chaos and Mark of the Wolves, Metro Melee, um, a few of the Samurai Showdowns, uh, Sengoku Three. Uh, and then just like a few of the older ones that you know came with the system, but that's pretty much it. Uh, there was one other fun thing I was going to show you guys that was kind of Neo Geo SNK related. Um, 